In this part of the lesson, we'll take a brief look at how you can use multiple lines in the same message box. We don't need any particular files for this, so let's start by opening up Excel and then creating a brand new blank workbook. We can then open the Visual Basic Editor from the Developer tab and then insert a new module in the usual way and create a quick new subroutine called Using Multiple Lines. I'd now like to display a message which shows the name of the current workbook on one line and then the current date on the next. Let's start by calling the message box function and then we can refer to the name property of the this workbook object. So this workbook dot name. What I'd now like to do is concatenate a character which will throw a new line in the message box. I can do that by using an ampersand and then look for the VB new line constant in the IntelliSense. As the name suggests, this will generate a new line character. I can then concatenate another piece of information, which in this case will be the result of the date function. If I now simply run the subroutine, I will find the name of the workbook on the first line and the current date on the next. If you review code written by other people, you may find a slightly different technique used to insert new line characters into a message. Let's make a copy of this first subroutine and then we'll rename this, calling it the old fashioned way. What we'll then do is change the reference to the VB new line constant, so I can remove that. Then if I press control and space, I can find another constant called VBCRLF. I believe the pronunciation is Vibicarilluf, or Visual Basic Carriage Return Line Feed, is actually what it stands for. Uh, the end result of running this subroutine is exactly the same as the previous one. If I run it, I'll see book one on the first line and the current date on the next. If you're curious about the history of these uh, characters, and let's face it, who wouldn't be curious about that? There are a couple of nice, fascinating articles on Wikipedia about control characters and also teleprinters and other associated things. Uh, worth a read if you're curious about the history of this sort of thing. Now there is one final technique used to generate new lines that you may still see used in other people's code. Hopefully you won't encounter it too often, but just in case you do, it's worthwhile understanding what's going on. Let's make another copy of one of these two subroutines and then I'm going to change the name of this one so that it's called, uh, let's call it the nerdy way. Okay, so rather than using one of the built-in constants like VB new line or the uh, let's remove that and instead we'll concatenate in the individual characters that make up a carriage return line feed. We can do this using the chr function. This allows us to pass in the number of a character that we want to generate. So for example, if we put in character number 64, that would generate the letter A. Well, that's not what we want to generate here. We want to generate, first of all, a carriage return, which is generated by the character number 13. I can then use another ampersand and then concatenate in character number 10, which is a line feed. And then if I were to run this subroutine, you'll see that I get the exact same results that I've already seen twice before. Um, there's absolutely no reason to do things this way these days. For any modern code, any new code you write, use the new line constant, it's what it's for. Uh, but just in case you do see this in other people's code, that's all it's doing, generating new lines.